Uh, hi there. Uh, welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Uh, we had kind of a short episode last time, but now we can properly dig into the testimony of these two weirdos. <laughs> I'm sure they don't have any uh, suspicious uh, dialogue or contradictory testimony. Hold it! The front door of Winterbanks was ajar, you say? Actually, I'm pretty sure it was a door, not a jar. <laughs> what time of night was this? It must have been all about one, right, Ringo? Yeah, I'd say so. Right, so okay. I know. A place would have been shot at one in the morning, just like every other shop in town. Oh well, it was pitch black inside, it's true. Uh, ain't that right, Ringo? I'm not so sure, Dash, and I seem to remember a little light burning inside. What about you, so give me old mucker? <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> Jeez, that's so genuine. Jeez, uh, there definitely was a small lamp burning inside. That's what alerted us to the situation in the first place. When these gentlemen ventured into the open establishment, the accused, Miss Gina Lestrade, already had the muzzle of a gun trained on the unfortunate victim. Objection! That is pure conjecture. Hmm. Ha! Perhaps, but it changes nothing. These brothers inadvertently wandered into the middle of a cold-blooded murder simply because they found the door of the victim's establishment open and ventured inside. All right, that's what happened. It was like some kind of sign begging us for to go in. It was. Uh, yeah, tell me more about that. What are you trying to suggest? That you had to go in? Uh, well, <laughs> uh, God moves in mysterious ways, they say, don't, don't they, Ringo? They do, Nash, they do. <laughs> Must be in some sort of providence, I reckon. Uh, God's, wheels, God's will often presents itself as a whim of thieves, does it? <laughs> hey, what, no whim? I'm dead sure of that. It won't, Nash, it won't. <laughs> like I said at the time. Eh, uh, you don't just find doors open in the middle of the night like that. <laughs> now, there's two no ways to uh, no two ways about it. <laughs> it was a sign that our long lost brother was inside. They're not very good liars, are they? Well, um, you can't deny it. <laughs> it led us to a brother who looks just like our brother. I say, cut it out. <laughs> Those chips are getting a chopping today. Yeah, it caught blind me. <laughs> Hold it! A gunshot, you say? Just the one. Are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? <laughs> uh, yep. Just the one, governor. I can swear to that. It was, Nash. It was. Ain't that right, bruv? Firearm used belonged to the victim himself. Yes, Mr. Winderbank always used to leave his gun lying around on the counter. Right, I remember. Remember. When we examined it, we found the revolver was completely out of rounds. That makes sense. Mr. Winderbank always used to say he only ever kept a single bullet loaded. That's true. I remember him saying that as well. 
so, uh, we can say with considerable certainty that only a single round was discharged from the firearm used as a murder weapon. Uh, yes, my lord, we can. And I should remind the court that the firearm in question was discovered in the hand of the accused. Hmm. Wonderful. Let's see what was what. The door was locked on the inside. Hold it! Do you mean the door between the main shop and the store? If my learned friend is having difficulty grasping the situation, perhaps a drawing would help. Excluding the shop's entrance from the street, there is only one other door. That is the storeroom. Of course, there was only this door and lamp burning. Not what you see, boy. And the door was hit by the curtain and all. That's right. When we arrived, the door was mostly obscured by the curtain. Tell me. Why exactly did you try to open that door? Eh? Any normal petty thief would run at the sound of a gunshot, I should think. Uh, oh, we, uh, well, uh, <laughs> your turn to write, Ringo. Well, Nash, uh, yeah, I suppose you're not saying we ain't normal, eh? Broadly speaking, humans respond in one of two ways on hearing a gunshot or scream. The timid flee, gripped by fear, while the courageous investigate to see if they might help. Mm -hmm. These gentlemen are the latter inclination. My learned Nipponese friend, it would seem, is of the former. Okay, that's just not very nice. Alright, somehow I just proved that I was a coward that night. Uh, thank you, Councils. Though, so, I believe we all understand, the door was locked and could not be opened. Proceed, Witnesses. We never done nothing, we never took nothing, we just left after that nice and quiet. Hold it! Hmm. You didn't take or do or take anything. Is that your story? Hmm. Uh, well, it was Bedlam soon after, was it? Yeah, it was Nash. It was. Didn't even have time to pull me dukes out, me Lucy Lockets. So with no time to take your hands out of your pockets, you just left, nice and quietly, you say. Ah, that's right, Governor. And we ain't more than violence. Based of benevolence, we are. We're not bludgers. Uh, we are, Nash. We are. <laughs> Never even put me dukes out, me lazy lockets. So, you clearly like us to believe. Eh? <laughs> Come again? As you fled from the pawnbrokers that night, did you not run into anyone else? Um. And. Did you not fire a gun at that person? Um. The plates are alive! They fired a gun, you say? Ah! Blimey, Governor! You ain't telling us it was you in the doorway! <laughs> Jeez, I just fucking realized. was. Why the bleeding Nora? Didn't you mention that before? Oh, that was... They said that together, I think. You were armed with a gun. And as you fled the scene, you fired that gun. And London's greatest detective, Herlock Sholmes! They shot the great Mr. Sholmes? 
I did hear that, actually. There was a rumor he'd been rushed to hospital. The great Cholmes? That's beyond the pale. On the night in question. This pair were arrested by the police within minutes of the discovery of the crime scene. The suspicious countenance rightly gave them away. <laughs> and when searched, a firearm was indeed found in their possession. Bah! Bah! bah. Furthermore, the barrel showed signs of a shot having been fired from it. Go, Jababoo! Yeah, the prosecution invites his lordship to examine the firearm recovered from these brothers. Oh, uh, yes, indeed. When there's a powder around the muscle, that will say, counsel. The court will hold this weapon as evidence. Yeah, obviously they had a gun, because, like, obviously they fucking shot our boy. Now, now, my learned Nipponese friend. Yes. Here's to you successfully presenting the evidence. For yes, there are the telltale signs of spit powder on this gun, and a single bullet missing from the cylinder. But the prosecution demands evidence that it was fired at the scene of the crime, under scrutiny in this trial. Objection! Well, I don't need evidence. Because I was there! Objection! However, the rest of this rest of us in this courtroom were not. If the defense fails to provide evidence in support of its rash claim, we shall have no choice but to toast your incompetence and move on. Evidence that these two fired that gun before they left Windebanks that night. The court demands that all claims are affirmed with clear proof. What evidence shows that these witnesses unloaded a firearm in the pawnbroker shop that night? Let's, uh, see. We'll examine the evidence, actually. So, there's ammunition still loaded in five of this revolver's six cylinders. Yes, which tells us that only a single shot has been fired from it. Exactly. The bullet that hit Hurley, in fact, isn't it? Uh, yes, um, it happened almost as soon as we walked in through Windebank's door. Hmm. I'll make those brothers pay. <laughs> Oh, I guess that. Well, I, I figured that should be evidence, right? Yeah, maybe we can present that. But also, let's, let's actually examine this too while we're at it. Ah, this is this is Mr. Windebank's gun. The cylinder is completely empty. Ah, Mr. Windebank always used to keep this gun to hand on his shop counter. Uh, yes. But only ever with a single bullet loaded, I understand. That's right! Keep all the pawned articles that were in his care safe. But his one bullet was fired that night, and the poor man lost his life. Was he protecting his shop, I wonder? Trying to keep the articles safe? Hmm. Pawnbroker perishes and pick purse plunder. Jeez, what's going on here? There's a sensational story lower down the front page as well. Look! Ministry Mole? Classified secrets may have been leaked overseas from Ministry of Justice. 
For a ten-year-old? Iris certainly has her finger on the pulse of world news. It's about secret communications between Great Britain and its allies. Apparently, they're being intercepted by hostile nations. Communications are being intercepted? But how would someone be doing that? That's the question, isn't it? I've come up with three po different possible methods so far. Are you looking for a new career, Runo? No, of course not. I wonder. Perhaps this is what Lord Stromhot was talking about yesterday. Yes, it could be. I and it could explain why he has Gregsy running from pillar to post at the moment. Huh. That's curious. I mean, yeah, both, I think, Gregson and Stronger mentioned that there was, like, serious matters afoot. Hmm. Okay, I think this actually might be what we're looking for, because I was going to suggest this, the gun, perhaps, but we actually have the blood samples, right? Uh, and the fact that there's two that we've identified, but one we haven't identified, well... I mean, that kind of explains itself, don't you think? The evidence is in this portfolio. What well, well, how on earth put on earth that you had that, Council? During the course of our investigations, we discovered a number of bloodstains. Uh, not trusting the police to do the job. They're trained to do. How arrogantly Nipponese of you. Well, well, anyway. We analyzed all the blood samples we found and recorded the results in this portfolio. And, uh, you claim to have the evidence. Look forward to demanding the ring. Yes, my lord. No, we're dialing that council. Present the pertinent evidence at once. What do you have in your portfolio that proves these witnesses unloaded a firearm at the scene? Uh, it's this one. Take that! So, I mean, you can see the bullet, too. What is that? Explain! It's a photographic print taken at Gwendolyn's Pawbrokery on the day of the incident. Ah, uh, well, the scene is a crime, is it? Is, is that a, a bullet hole? And if my eyes want to see me, it appears the bullet is still lodged there. Yes, as your lordship noticed, the bullet pierced Mr. Windebank's calendar. The date shown being the 16th of April, the very day of the pawnbroker's death. The incident had occurred at one hour after midnight, but this indicates that a separate shot had been fired some time after the calendar had been set to the 16th. That's right. And while it isn't irrefutable, the defense believes this is credible evidence that the evidence that the witnesses did fire a round of their gun in the pawnbrokers that night. Nah. Order! How does the prosecution stand, Lord Van Zeex? If that is the direction my learned friend wishes to take, the prosecution has no objection. What? Oh, okay. But you'll forgive me for flinging my hallowed chalice aside in disgust at the repugnancy it exposes. Bro, all we did was show a fucking calendar page. How fucking repugnant could it possibly be? Yes, on the night in question, these brothers entered the pawnbrokery illegally. And like the bold baddies they claim to be, they would fire on the new arrivals before fleeing back onto the street. Eh? So you mean you're, you're, you're agreeing with us? Then why the fuck are you calling it repugnant, my dude? 
Ah, take it easy there, Governor. You're allowed us in the soup. We had a deal. You weren't going to get into them uh, details. Tell him, Skokie. Uh, uh, set the broke straight. I have nothing to add. So he knew, did he? Von Zeke knew that their testimony would almost certainly expose the extent of their crimes. It would seem now that I owe my learned Nippity's friend a word of gratitude. What do you mean? What I mean is that you have helpfully confirmed an important fact. To what fact do you refer, Lord Randikes? As has been established, at the point of their arrest, a shingle shot had been fired from the brother's gun. However, as that shot found its target in Mr. Sholmes. Then clearly, these witnesses cannot be accused of the fatal shooting of the proprietor and victim. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess. In other words, these two men have no material connection to the murder of Mr. Winterbank at all. Oh, so that's it. Okay, that was a lot of, uh... A lot of... Jeez. You guys are very silly. And that's it! We didn't have nothing to do with it! We didn't, Nash, we didn't. That's what I reckon. Your crimes include unlawful injury, intent to steal, perjury, and let us not forget, attempted murder! Yeah, quite a catalog, eh, fellas? Uh... We're in for it now, Groove. <laughs> now then, let us take a moment to consider the aforementioned great detective, Mr. Herlock Sholmes. It would seem the man patronized the pawnbrokers in question somewhat regularly. Where's he going with this? Mr. Sholmes appears to take pleasure in tinkering with the centric machinery. A centric? Cent Not me. Don't give me that look. He installed a pair of machines like this one in the victim's shop. Oh, that's one of Hurley's right-handed recorders. What is that, Pounsum? It has the appearance of a photographic contraption. As your lordship has surmised, it is indeed a camera attached to a small timing device. Every half an hour, it automatically photographs the interior of the establishment. The idea being that if a thief were to break into the shop, he would be caught red-handed. Yeah, you know, it's actually fair. You would think there would be evidence of, uh, you know, of whoever broke in that night, you know. The prosecution has obtained the photographs taken by the device on the night in question. 8 p.m., 8.30, 9, 9.30. As the court will observe, copious identical prints are produced in a quite desultory fashion. Hmm, rather prodigal life here. Yeah? In fact, there are two such devices in the victim's shop, my lord. If I may refer the court to the plan of their premises, uh, their respective positions are here and here. You say these cameras produce a print every half hour. I'm afraid I'll fail to see. that would help if the anticipated thief conducted his activities in one of the many 30 minute intervals. Uh, one can only pray that the would-be criminal lingers, my lord. Hmm. On the night in question, the witnesses currently in the stand were not caught on camera. 
<laughs> oh, that's a bit of fried talk, eh, bro? Mm. Lady Lok loves a skulking. Witnesses, at what time does your trespassing begin? Eh, must have been just after one. Uh, right, bro? Eh, must have been, Nash. Must have been. Yeah, just gone one. In which case, minutes before these brothers entered the establishment. What scene might we expect to see within the shop? Let us examine the evidence. Oh. Uh... That, that's uh, not good for us. G good lord! It's... it's a defendant! Miss Gina Lestrade! Bah! Bro, what the fuck, Gina? You didn't tell us about that part! Goddamn! As the court can clearly see... The accused is pictured, gun in hand, facing the victim over the shop counter. No doubt coercing the proprietor to open the door to his storeroom. A oh, quiet. What can Quino look too easily a match in the events that unfolded? The court will take this one out of print as evidence, if you please, Captain. Okay, again, this is why having Gina tell us everything that happened uh, would have been nice, you know, before it actually happened. Or, like, you know, telling us where she was and how she, like... But she didn't tell us any of that shit. Ugh. I... I don't believe it! Jenny! In short... The accuser is the only person who could possibly have killed Mr. Windebank. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. I've been befuddled and betwixt and fuckled. I say, my lord. Oh, hey, it's you. Oh, uh, wonder if I might put in a word at this point. Uh, 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 go ahead, Mr. Paulman. Uh, took a valuable bullet to the knee in the battle of my want. 1880, don't you know? Decorated for it and all that, but uh, forced to retire from service, sadly. Uh, of course, a medal can never outshine the exploits of chaps like us on the battlefield. Uh, yes, Mr. Foreman? And, uh, what exactly is our point? Uh, carried on at the battle at some time, as you see. The battle of daily life, if you like. And here I am now, leading this small squadron. Six men, all good and true. And we'll all go down together, you mark my words. One for all, and all for one. The ladies and gentlemen of the jury have reached agreement, have they? Is that what we are to understand? Well, Mr. Foreman, was that correct? Uh, in a matter of speaking, yes, sir. Uh, that is the Garadab Squadron's position, sir. What? No! It's too soon to make a judgment here. Uh, sack the sport for the court, then. All the double. His lordship insists on promptitude at all times. That goes to making decisions, too. Okay, I don't think fucking promptitude is a word, lady. I think you'll find the truth is as clear as day now. I could reach out and touch it. I wouldn't have left it in there. I just wouldn't. Oh, but in all honesty, I can't actually remember. Situation's clear. Stop. No room for doubt. Stop. Truth now. Undeniable. Stop. I am very sorry for brothers. They are unlucky. 
Ah, very well. Promptitude. What kind of fucking word is promptitude? Oh. Okay, I guess promptitude actually is a word. I guess I hadn't heard it used before. I guess I got egg on my face. I now call upon each member of the jury to state his or her leaning in this matter. I don't feel considered by next to the court. Guilty. 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 Oh, yeah, when did this fall over dead? Jesus. Also, um, bad. That's that's bad for us. <laughs> Just wanna. Again, this is why I, really, I, I wish Tina would have told us that, you know, she pulled a gun on this dude and, like, could have explained why or how or what. <sighs> oh, well. Thankfully, we still have the summation examination in our back pocket. Uh, but doesn't need a plan. The jury is unanimous in its reading already. That photograph... It must be the definitive evidence that Gregson mentioned. But Jenny didn't shoot him! No, of course not! My lord! The defense wishes to assert its right to a summation examination. Uh, very well. The court grants permission. So, you refuse to meet, admit defeat again. How unsurprising. We shall proceed immediately with the summation examination. Mr. Foreman, are all members of the jury ready? Absolutely, sir. All right, ready for action, my chaps. Very good. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will each explain on what ground wow, you have determined the defendant were guilty. There, yeah, now the evidence clearly points the finger of guilt to this young pickpocketine. As a housemaid, I should like to see all filthy eyesores promptly and rigorously eliminated. Yeah, you kind of said you said something to, to the, that extent last time you were on the stand. I think you'll find that if you look at that photograph in stereo, that truth will just pop out. And if I have left it in there, I should think there'll be repercussions by now. Five made up. Stop. Global radio transmission further to follow. Stop. In motherland, we say never judge by clothes, judge by head. I am convinced, convinced the brothers are innocent. Okay, the fucking they're they're not the ones on trial, Judge uh, Jude, villain Borshevik. Uh, that grants some crime. Highly evidence, boo indeed implicate the defendant rather comprehensively. The storeroom looks from the inside in which the victim and the accused were discovered alone. And in the accused's hand, the fatal revolver, the firing of which was heard by these witnesses. Yeah, not to mention this print. Yeah, it's not very good stuff. Yeah, they from a chap who's seen action on the battlefield. That young girl's on the third pulling the ballot trigger. Thanks a lot, Mr. Sholmes. Oh dear! How these cameras are supposed to help, not hinder! I'm afraid I think you have an uphill struggle out of you. But Gina didn't shoot Mr. Winderbank. I know it. Which means there's more to this situation that we've yet to see. Agreed. You have the floor, Council. Proceed with an summation examination. Look at look at that look at that lad. Uh, let's see. Um, I think I will save this summation examination uh, for the next episode. Uh, we, we, we've got a good good enough length as is. I would say. I would say. Uh, so again, I found myself wishing that. Uh, 
that our old pal Gina would have fucking told us about the, uh, this, you know, beforehand. This is why you always get the full story from your, the client before you fucking uh, go into court. So that way you don't get the fucking... You don't get a shocking discovery of such as this. But hey, who knows? Maybe uh, the, the, the timestamp was uh, forged or, you know, something of the... Oh, look at that! Look at that! Look, look at the doggy! That is... Okay, that just looks like a fucking actual photo of an actual real-life dog. That they just, uh, I don't know what, like, imprinted, uh, what is, what's the word? Uh, that they just imposed on the fucking game. Like, seriously, that's just a real dog. Is that your dog, Windbank? Why do you have a picture of a, of a real life dog? I mean, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm, oh, I'm over exaggerating it. it. By the way, it looks quite realistic compared to, like, the art style of the rest of the game. Like, look at this cat. And look at this, uh, look at this dog. It's a bit strange, don't you think? But anyway, that's not the fucking... That's not... I don't think that's going to be like the contradiction that overturns the whole case on its head or whatever. Anyway, enough, uh... Enough rambling. In the next episode, we will tackle these jurors who I have almost... Who I've met in one form or fashion, except for that the dude with the, the 3D glasses or whatever. But anyway, until then...